Okay, here we go. Back at it again, right? So I wanted to have a quick chat about the uh, next war Korea scenario that I played. Uh, kind of talk through the how that exposed the game mechanics, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and uh, not that there's very much that I didn't like about it. It's a, a really solid scenario. Uh, some of the wording in it's a little unclear and. <clears throat> Well, it was unclear for me anyway. Uh, so we worked through all of that and, uh, and had a good time with it. Which kind of got me to thinking about the actual game system. I've spoken about the Next War series before in my gameplays of the India-Pakistan uh, game. So you know what I, I think about Mitch Land's Next War series in general. I think it would be a fair assessment to say that I, I like the series and I think it, it's taken a lot of uh, influence or inspiration perhaps from the Third World War series, but it's been updated and modernized. And, and I thought running through very, at a very high level, the sequence of play to try and highlight where some of those, those nifty parts come from might give you some insight into whether or not that's something that you might like to play at some point in the future. Uh, when I do my AARs, I typically go through a, a typical sequence of, you know, what's the battle space? What, what, what are we commanding? What's the OB like? Uh, what are your objectives? What are the components like? Uh, how do you resolve combat and are logistics important and is there any historical narrative and what's the play time like and stuff like that. So just sort of blanket conversation. I may not do all, touch on all of those today, but I do want to just kind of run through the sequence of play. So you go through this exercise of doing weather and determining initiative. An initiative is determined by how well you went, how well you performed last turn, which is kind of cool, right? So if you're winning, you continue to win, you continue to have the advantage, and you continue to have uh, the ability to move more and fight more than your opponent. Nice. Uh, the um, once you get through that initiative phase, and you do this, then you do this electronic detection phase, which is where over a certain range and for a certain number of uh, uh, tries, you're allowed to try and identify uh, certain types of units, headquarter units in particular. And that allows you then to plan uh, strikes against those headquarters and uh, they can be deadly as you, if you can influence or impact the HQs of the enemy, then you start to impact their command and control and their combat support capability and if you destroy them, it affects the supply and logistics and stuff like that. So <clears throat> nicely interwoven into the gameplay. And once you do electronic detection, you then have this uh, special forces phase. And that special forces phase is uh, somewhat of an abstraction because it's a difficult concept to deal with, right? You're sending in SEAL teams or uh, Delta Force teams or uh, Rangers or whatever it may be, or, you know, uh, uh, other countries, special forces groups and things like that. And... Uh, you can basically do uh, two types of missions. You can do a raid mission or you can do a, uh, what I would call a, a targeting or detection mission. And uh, if you're doing a raid, it's a little more risky. You can do a raid on a mobile supply unit, on supply depots, on headquarters, on airfields, on uh, uh, airstrips, well, whatever. There's two. There's two types of airfields on the on the map. So depending on those types, those types, and all of them have uh, installations as well. So depending on how uh, risky you want to be and what type of terrain it's in, uh, you can run these these missions. You can even run interdiction missions as a special forces operator. So lots of fun to be had there. Simple die roll against terrain type by mission type gives you a success criteria, which is either a destruction, a one or a two, or a miss. On the detection side of things, you have this uh, ability to do what you were doing in the electronic detection phase and detect, detect an HQ or a supply depot or whatever the case may be, and then have that uh, that will then allow it to be uh, struck by air or naval forces later on. It will also allow, you can also do uh, 
targeting missions, which will improve the uh, DRMs for future strikes. It's kind of like lazing the target, I guess. And so there's that activity as well, which occurs on the, <clears throat> on, I think, on the detection side of the, the house uh, of the missions. So lots of interesting different things you can do and lots of choices that need to be made in terms of sequencing. There's two special forces operations phases. And so you might want to uh, do detection first to make sure you can find this HQ later on to hit it. And then you might want to uh, put... I don't know, put targeting on it. Or you might want to try and then try and raid that, uh, raid that um, HQ or mobile supply spot or installation or whatever the case may be. Lots of different things you can try and do. That's before you even have moved to single unit yet. Then you get into the air war. And the air war has uh, you know, been decried as you know, too big, too complicated, too many pieces, too much. And I would say to that that it's really not that bad. Uh, it certainly does not double the, the game time, uh, gameplay time. It may add 25% to it, which, depending on the scenario you're playing, could be a lot. But it's only going to be for a few turns, particularly when you're playing these sort of asymmetrical deals like this where uh, you... Hang on a second here. I just had a telephone call coming in. So when you're playing these asymmetrical situations, you really do get a... Uh, the, you get through the air war, the major portion of the air war, fairly quickly. And there's some game play and, and tactics and strategies inside that game as well. And it uh, lends itself to being very thoughtful about what you want to do and how you want to do it and when you want to do it.